Hello everyone, this is Fletch from Twilight Render. Welcome to the Twilight Render Getting Started video tutorial series, Six Essentials to Rendering with SketchUp and Twilight Render Plugin. Please download the files from the link in the description below and feel free to follow along. I'm an architect and designer myself, so there's no reason to be intimidated. I'm here to help, so let's dive in together. Let's get started by opening the Getting Started tutorial file. It says right here in the file name Twilight Getting Started Tutorial SKP. The first step that we talked about in rendering was having a great model. The second essential that you need to understand is dynamic camera placement. So let's look at how to dynamically place a camera. A thing that I commonly see on the forums is people will render something maybe very flat looking like this and then they'll complain that it's not a very realistic or good looking rendering. Well, let's talk about that. The first thing that you want to do is click on position camera. If you're not seeing these tools, you need to open up the large tool set. So go on review toolbars and find the large tool set and enable it in SketchUp. So the position camera tool works like this. If you click on a point, it will float the camera above that point at the eye height given here. If you click and drag, it will do something very strange. It will place the eye height at the point you clicked, and then it will point the camera in the direction you clicked, which ends up with a mess like that. So please don't do that. Click on the point you want to place the camera above, and that's all there is to it. Then use the walk tool, and you can rotate your camera. You can adjust slightly the position of the camera. You can move the camera and you can hold the shift key down and you can drop the camera in height. Having a low camera angle often looks much better in renderings than having a high camera angle. So I'm lowering the camera angle until I see a little piece of this foreground. In photography you always want to have a foreground, a midground, and a background. We'll talk about the background later when we talk about the environments. So what I'm looking at here now is the magnifying glass tool. If you click on the magnifying glass tool, we've already, first we position the camera, next we use the walk tool and the shift tool to get the right camera height. Now I want to use the focal length tool in the zoom. If I were to just zoom up, it will move the camera, but I didn't want to do that, so I'm going to try to see if I can click back. The problem with this um, view previous tools it doesn't actually work very well does it if i hold the shift key down while i'm zooming with the magnifying glass shift key and i'm pulling down with the magnifying glass it zooms out without moving my camera it changes the focal length now if you were to use a wide angle lens focal length like 28 millimeters it would look a little extreme in this particular case okay so we probably don't want to do that. Let's click on home and go back to the way it was. And we can see the focal length was 57 millimeters before. However, if we're in the back and we want to see the whole backyard and we have a 57 millimeter camera angle, well, that's far too tight to see this, this backyard, this reflecting pool. We can either look over here where the sculpture will be or we can look down the hallway back to the front of the building, but we can't see it all. So that's why you'd want to use the magnifying glass when you're in a tight space. Maybe you're inside of an apartment or a small room. You want to hold the shift key down and set a reasonable focal length. 32 millimeters seems to work really well for me in most cases. 28 seems to get a little distorted. And then I'm going to use the walk tool and fine tune. What's nice with the walk tool is that it bangs into walls for me. So with the collision enabled, I don't accidentally put my camera inside of a wall. And there we go. And then, of course, you right-click and add your scene. Now, another essential thing to remember when you're adding your scenes is to make sure hidden geometry is turned on if it's important to you. Anything that's inside the model, when you hit render, will be calculated during the rendering process. So you want to hide any object that is not immediately seen in the reflections or in the actual view itself. So, for instance, if I had a lot of furniture, that were in this building, say over there, I would definitely want to hide that furniture before I set up the scene here. Hide that furniture and when I and I have hidden geometry remembered, then I right click and say update and it will have that scene set, but also with that hidden geometry hidden. 
then I'm not rendering furniture that's not there and the calculations for the engine are not slowed down. So that's an essential tip. Finally, let's look at the scene view tool. The scene view tool here sets up the third point views. It sets up the focal plane. It shows the, how the resolution of the image is defining the extents of the image. And it also allows me to rotate about any point that I click on. That doesn't happen inside the normal orbit tool in SketchUp. If I use the normal orbit tool, it works like that. And if I use the orbit tool in the scene view tool, it will rotate about a specific point, any point that I click on in my model. Okay. So how is this helpful? If we go to the home view, let's say we like how high the uh, roof is here. Maybe we want to move it over to the third point. So if I click on that point and I hold the shift key down, I can move that roof over to the third point. Then I'll move it up a little bit higher in my view. Now I want that to maintain that position, but I want to come down here until this line is crossing the bottom of my view at the third point. So I'm going to click on the top and leave that roof position in place until that goes approximately at the third point. And that's how I use the scene view tool to define a dynamic view. Now, uh, the last point would be that if you use the scene view tool and you control click on a point, I'm holding control down, now I click a point, it's going to move my depth of field focal plane to be near that point that I click on. Now if I want to see depth of field in the view, it's not automatically by default enabled. So if we go into the render dialog and we choose the camera options, I can enable depth of field right here. When I do that, you'll see both focal planes now show up. And what it is, is that the focal point is encapsulated between the two planes. So if the high F, with a high F number, you might not see both of those planes. So let's put a low F number like two. And now we can see those two focal planes are really close together. If I do that, and I click on a point, control clicking this point will set those uh, two planes to encapsulate that point. Here they are again. So that's how depth of field is controlled. If I increase this to say eight, the distance between the fore and back plane of the depth of field focal planes will be uh, resized and you'll see how that works there. So default DOF is 16, which is a very low depth of field. If you use four, it will be very high. But be careful with depth of field because it can be overdone and it will make your building look miniaturized if you have too much depth of field on in a exterior architectural rendering. Depth of field is most noticeable in a small rendering. For instance, if you're rendering a cup sitting on a table with a pencil and another object in the foreground or background, then you might want to use a strong depth of field like four. But for exteriors, keeping it high like 8 or 16 is uh, much more realistic. But we're going to turn that off for now. Depth of field will increase render time, so just be aware of that. Thank you for watching part 2 of our 6 essentials for rendering in SketchUp with Twilight Render Plugin. Please hit that like button if this tutorial has been helpful for you. Stay tuned for part 3, our next essential skill, which is all about materials. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications so you won't miss a trick. This has been Fletch for Twilight Render. Until next time, I'll see you on the forums.